All right, let's take a look at your next lesson today, uh, which launches graphing and writing inequalities. We're actually going to do two lessons in one. Uh, let's start by heading up to your learning goals today. Uh, you can see, let me get my highlighter out. Uh, we're going to be do doing learning goal number three, 33 that says you'll be able to write an inequality from a graph and vice versa. And 34, I will be able to write and graph an inequality from a real life situation. So let's go ahead and fill that in here. Okay, so we have learning goal uh, for 4-1 here. We're doing learning goal 33 and learning goal 34 for the word problems. Okay, go ahead and put your dates and then let's head down to the lesson. Okay, all right, so one thing to understand about an inequality is it's really not much different than an equation. Uh, the only difference is it has more than one answer. Uh, and so when we're saying less than or greater than, we're talking about a whole set of numbers that can be less than or greater than that target or focus number. All right, uh, so our key vocabulary today, uh, we just discussed what an inequality means. These are all the inequality symbols. Uh, anything that is not equal to, okay, less than, greater than, uh, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or not equal, okay? And so uh, the very first thing is you do need to refresh yourself on these signs. And so um, I always think about it, you know, when you're reading, we read from left uh, to right, okay? And so as you're reading this, you can see you hit the small part of this symbol first, so this is the less than symbol. As you're reading from left to right, if you hit the big side of this symbol first, uh, that means it's the greater than symbol. Same thing, reading left to right, if I hit the smaller side of this symbol, it's the less than, uh, but you can sort of visualize this equal sign here. It's less than or equal to. Uh, as I'm reading left to right, I hit the greater than side, uh, the bigger side, so this is greater than or equal to, okay? Uh, and then this is obviously an equal sign with a slash, so it means not equal. Uh, if you read these right to left, it just is backwards. It's the same thing, though, okay? So, um, like, x could be greater than whatever's on that side, okay? Uh, and so just be really careful. You don't want to make mistakes because you're not reading those correctly, Okay, or using them correctly. All right, um, we'll talk about these as we get to them. Uh, this is the breakdown of how to graph a number, uh, an inequality on a number line, and just how to write an inequality. Um, but we're going to start off with a little bit of uh, just some review with inequalities, and then we'll uh, do a little inquiry work. So this says find the possible solutions for each inequality. So obviously, uh, if I have an equal sign, 11 can only equal 11, okay? Uh, and so in this case, x has to equal 11. Same thing with the next one. w has to be negative 9 equals negative 9. There's no other options. But now I have this r, and we're saying that it's greater than 13. Um, but notice it doesn't say greater than or equal to. So I have to pick everything greater than 13. Um, that could be 13.1 is r. Uh, that could be 14, 15, and so on. Anything that is greater. Um, now when I have this n is greater than or equal to, I have to start by understanding that 4 is equal to, and then I can go up from there, 4.1, 5, or whatever I choose that's greater than 4. Okay. Um, when we have a negative, you're going to have to stop and slow down and think a little bit more here. So negative 1 is less than or equal to c. So think about C. Uh, because C is over here, I'm going to look at it sort of backwards also and read it right to left. So C is greater than or equal to negative 1. So that would include negative 1. Okay? And then now I need to slow down and think here. So what is greater than negative 1? Okay? Uh, so greater than negative 1 is moving to the right on a number line. So we have what things like uh, negative 0.5, we have 0, 1, 2, those are things that are greater than. So C could equal any of those things, 
okay? All right, and then our next one, uh, three is greater than t, okay? Notice there's no or equal to, okay? Uh, and so I also can look at this backwards since t is on the right and say t is less than three. So anything for t, t can equal anything less than three. So it could be uh, 2.9 is less than three, it could be zero, uh, negative one, negative two, and so on, as long as it's less than three, okay? And three is greater than it, okay? All right, uh, this next section, we have to know how to graph them. So this is the basics of how to graph inequalities. Um, you make a number line using three numbers, okay? Um, you don't need to do more, but you can't do less. Uh, you just ask yourself, what is the focus number? And what we mean is if they're saying x is greater than 3, this is your focus number, okay? The number they're having us focus on. Uh, and then here's the only thing you have to remember really with the graphing. Um, it matters what kind of circle you use when you plot that particular point, okay? So an open circle, okay, something like this on a number line, um, this just means... Uh, greater than or less than, okay, is an open circle. A closed circle means greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, okay? Because think about it, you're actually closing in and including that number. The circle is not including the number, okay? And then you just shade the numbers uh, in whatever direction uh, you need it to be, okay? All right, so... I guess here's a good sort of example version of what these would look like. Okay, so only fill it in if it has the equal or equal to. So let's go down and we'll do these real quick. Okay, so if x equals 11, um, 11 is our target number, so I'm going to uh, put that right there. I'm going to just draw a really quick number line. Okay, just spread out. Uh, your threes. Lines go on forever, so make sure you have this. Uh, I'm going to go one higher and one lower, okay? And so my target number is always going to be right here. So this is my target number. And x equals 11, so I'm just going to put a point right there, okay? Uh, and that is it for that, okay? Uh, now, the next one, because we have a greater than uh, symbol, now I'm going to have the actual arrow uh, going in a direction because it's including lots of numbers, not just one. So the same thing, here's our target number is negative 1, and so that's going to be uh, my number I write down. Let's go ahead and just draw our line real quick and split that into threes. Okay, I'm going to go one higher than that, which is zero, and one lower, which is negative two. Okay, and then I have greater than. Okay, so this is going to be an open circle. So you can see the little note I have here. Okay, if it's equal to, like over here, it's automatically a closed circle. Anytime you see the word equal to in there. So I have an open circle, and x are all the numbers that are greater than negative one. Okay. Uh, and so greater than is going to uh, send me to the right. So let me change colors here so it really stands out uh, and pick a smaller pen size here. So I'm going to have an open circle around the negative 1, okay, because it does not include, it's not equal to negative 1. Um, and all my x's are greater than, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and show that darker shaded space going that way and you have to really make sure it stands out so it's clear you can't do a thin line over top okay all right let's go over the next one uh, let me go back to red or maybe i'll just go to black all right now i see x is less than or equal to i'm going to make my little hint that i'm going to have a solid circle because i see the equal to here's my target number is seven draw your line your three tick marks okay one uh, that goes higher, one that goes lower, and then I'm going to fill in because it says equal to, and then I need to do all the x's that are less than 7. So going smaller than 7, so that means I'm going to go ahead and 
do a darker shade all the way less than seven. All right, this next one, let me go back to black. Okay, um, I see there's no equals, okay, or equal to, so it's going to be an open circle. My target number is negative six. Draw my line, draw my three tick marks. I need to go one higher, which would be negative five, one lower, which is negative seven, a colder temperature. Go ahead and put my open circle and then decide which way my arrow is going. So I'm focusing on all the x's that are less than negative six. So I'm going to read it this way. Okay? X's are less than negative six. And so I'm going to show where all those numbers are that are less than negative six. So you can see you just have to slow down and be sort of careful. Um, this next one, it says that um, x does not equal nine. Okay. Uh, and so if you ever see this, it just means that uh, it's an open circle because it does not equal. Uh, nine is my target number. I'm going to draw my line just like I did before. Put my three tick marks. Do one higher, which is 10. One lower, which is eight. And all I'm going to do is put a circle uh, because it doesn't equal nine, but it also doesn't say that it equals other things either. Okay. And so it's just going to be a circle right there. Okay, and that is it there. Let's go ahead and look at uh, looking at a graph to determine what the inequality would be. Okay, uh, so when we're doing this, first look at your target number. So I can see my target number is one. Okay, um, I can also see that it is shaded, and I sh know shaded means that it automatically is going to have an equal to. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, write my target number of 1, okay, and then I'm going to um, go ahead and write the uh, variable, and so we're just going to put x here, and then I need to decide, um, I know that it has the or equal to, but I do need to now think, is it going to be less than or greater than? So what are all the x's, okay, since they're moving to the left, the x's are less than or equal to 1. So you can see the process of how you would go through there. So let's look at this. Right away I can see that it's uh, not equal at all. So it's just greater than or less than. Uh, because it's going to the right, my x's are all going to be greater than. Uh, and I can see my target number. So let's write your target number is negative 2. Okay. Uh, put my x. It's easiest to always do the x's on the left when you're writing them. Uh, and then I need to look. There's no equals because it's open. So it's just going to be all my x's are, because it's going to the right, greater than negative 2. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at 4-1. And then uh, we'll be able to do some practice with this. Okay. All right, so these are some word problems, okay? Um, when you are looking at word problems uh, and just writing them in general, you really want to identify, like, what is the variable going to be? Pick a variable that makes sense. Find that focus number, okay? And then decide if things are um, less than or greater than and or less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or possibly not equal. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and take a look at that together, okay? Um, a lot of this is going to be looking at things and sort of making synonyms for the phrase, okay? So a person must be at least, so I'm noticing hints, 16 years old to drive in Pennsylvania, okay? So the thing that we don't know or our variable is that a person must be at least 16 years old to drive, so we're talking about the person's age, okay? And so I'm going to have my variable be A, and this is going to be the age of driver, okay? And now think, what did we say about the age? And so what you want to do is sort of give a summary of what this means by using the words greater than or less than. So ask yourself, does a person need to be 
greater than 16 years or less than 16 years. And if they have to be at least 16 years, um, that means they have to be that number or older. And so since they have to be greater than 16 years, um, but it says at least that. So you have to ask, can they be 16? If they can be that number, they can be greater than or equal to that number. So you have to talk through it like that, okay? So now I know my variable. So I can say the age of people must be greater than or equal to 16. So let's go ahead and graph it. Remember, we start by putting our target number, which is 16. Then I'll draw my line. Put your three ticks, and then one higher, one lower, okay? It has equal to, so I'm going to go ahead and shade in the six, and then all of my A's have to be greater than or equal to, so we're going to head this direction and really shade that in sort of dark to represent something different there. So we have... The age is 16 or more because it's shaded in. All right, next one. The number of hours a person can work a week without getting overtime is at most 40 hours. So start to ask yourself, um, it says at most 40 hours. So can you be more? If no, then no, you have to be 40 hours or less, okay? Because it says at most 40. So can you be 40? Yes. Okay, so let's figure out our variable. So we're talking about hours. So I'm going to choose A as my variable. So uh, hours you can work. And we're going to put our variable first. So my hours can be at most 40 hours. Okay, So that means my hours have to be less than. They cannot be more than 40 hours. They have to be less than. Can they be equal to? Yeah, it just says at most 40 hours, okay? So my hours have to be less than or equal to 40, okay, to be allowed. So now I can go ahead and copy this down. So a lot of it is just talking through it. All right, let's go ahead and graph it. It has the equals to, so I know it's going to be a solid uh, point. Uh, we're going to write our target number, draw our line, do our three tick marks, and then I can go ahead and shade in this point for 40 because it includes 40. And all of my H's, my numbers or hours, are less than the 40. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a different color to make it really stand out. Shade it in really well and show that arrow going to the left showing that the hours have to be 40 or less. Okay, so there we go. All right, take a look at number three. In order to ride the triple threat roller coaster, you must be no less. So think about that what means. I'm not allowed to be less than 42 inches tall. Okay, so put that in terms of less than or greater than. So do I have to be less than 42 or do I need to be uh, 42 or greater? If I can be no less than 42 to ride. That means I have to be 42 inches or more to get to go on. So what are we talking about? We're talking about how tall. So my height has to be greater than 42. But then I ask, can I be 42? It just says no less than 42. So if I can be 42, then it's greater than or equal to. So let's define our variable. So H is my height, H-E-I-G-H-T. Um, my inequality is my height must be greater than or equal to 42. And then my graph, okay, I notice the solid equal to point. Uh, I'm going to write my target number, draw my arrow, put my three tick marks, do one higher, one lower, and then we can go ahead and shade in our point or the 42, and then reread your inequality. All my H's, all my numbers must be greater than. So that means we're going to the right. Then just go ahead and shade it in. And there we go. So all my numbers, as long as I have 42 or more. All right, next one. The most number of cans collected by a student was 256. 
right and inequality represent the number of cans collected by all other students, okay? So if this person collected 256, okay, that was the most. No one did any more, okay? We're supposed to write an inequality to show what everyone else got. So did everyone else get more than 256 or less? They got less, okay? So this is the number of cans, okay? So I know cans usually, or C is usually cost, but in this case, we'll use it as cans. Um, and so we'll say number of cans uh, for all others. Okay, so let's sort of think through this. So my number of cans for everyone else, was it less than or greater than 256? Uh, so it was less than 256. Now we have to think about the equals to. So think about picture other kids. If it says the most number of cans collected by any student is 256, that means did another kid have 256 or not? In this case, no, because they're saying the most by any student, meaning anyone at all, was 256, and it means no one else did it. So if I'm finding out what everyone else is, it means everyone else, C, is less than that 256. So this is going to be an open circle. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll write our target number of 256, draw our line, put your three tick marks, and now I can go ahead and plot my point. So it's an open circle because it doesn't include 256. And C's numbers are all less than that. Oops, I forgot to put my two other numbers. 257, 255. So now I can go ahead and show that everyone was less than 256. And there we go and I'm making sure it's not filled in because no one else was 256. All right, last one here. The forecast says that the amount of snow, the snow belt, we're in the snow belt, uh, which means we get a lot of snow from Lake Erie, we will exceed 10 inches. So you have to know what exceed means. That means that we're going to get more than that. So um, the snow will be more than 10 inches, okay? Um, will it be 10? Nope, it's gonna be more than 10, okay? So I'm gonna have S equal snow, okay? Or we can say snow amount. Uh, my inequality is gonna be that the snow is gonna be greater than 10, not equal to it. And then my inequality, let's go ahead and plot our 10, do our line, our three tick marks, one high, one low, and this is going to be an open point because it doesn't include 10, and S is all greater than, which goes to the right. So I'm going to shade my dark arrow there. All right, that is it for writing and graphing inequalities. Um, obviously, the big focus is just slowing down um, your new information today is those filled in points versus the not filled in. Uh, so focus on that and all those other little tips for determining greater than or less than.